Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNumphoto.com and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the desktop version of the photographer's ephemeris. Uh, but before you turn the video off, what we're also going to be showing you is how you can use it with your mobile phone as well, your smartphone. Um, without having to buy the uh, paid version of the Photographer's Ephemeris. Or it could be that you actually prefer using the free version, the desktop version that you, you can see here. Um, but I'm going to show you how to kind of combine the two so you can plan your shots on your desktop and then uh, share that information with your smartphone. So you've got, when you've got your smartphone with you, uh, it will remind you when the shoot is going to be, and it's also going to have a nice handy map on there where the shoot is actually going to be. So, uh, but we're going to come to that in a minute. First off, what is the Photographer's Ephemeris? Well, it's this really powerful tool that is also a very, very simple. What basically it does, it allows, well, it tells you where the sun and the moon are going to be rising and setting on any day on any place in the world and also the transit or the path of that sun and that moon throughout the day as well so put it simply um, what you can see here is this is Gosport my hometown if we zoom in a bit there we go this is Google Earth we can see here and we can look at the the map in terms of you know a standard road map like that the satellite view, a hybrid of both, or we could look, just look at the terrain. Sometimes I, I quite like the hybrid view because um, you can see the roads, but you can also see sort of the landmarks. So for example, here, right in the middle, this is the Gosport Portsmouth Ferry here. And then over here, you've got, you can't really see it, but that is the Spinnaker Tower. You, if you see my photos, you can probably see that shadow there. It's this uh, really nice sort of, um, landmark in Portsmouth. So if I then um, let's put get the date right over here right over here on the right hand side you can see the date can't you if I then put my little marker by clicking down in the bottom right hand corner see that there that little tag that's me and I can move that around wherever I like and just drop it down somewhere let's drop it there because that's at the Esplanade down by the ferry and I could look across to the Spinnaker Tower, and uh, you know, if you know my photo stream at all on Flickr, uh, you'll have seen plenty of pictures of the Spinnaker Tower. So, what can we see on this picture? Well, what we can see um, on the right-hand side, we can obviously see the date, and today's date is Wednesday, the nineteenth of March. And then in this box, it tells us tells us the sun rose today at nine minutes past six, um, and it's set at quarter past six in the evening. The moon's going to come up at 9.40 p.m. and then set at 7.08, sort of tomorrow morning. Um, actually, no, sorry, the moon rise at 7.08 this morning and then set there. So basically, we've got a crossover into the next day, haven't we? So you think, oh, okay, so what does that mean? Well, if we look on the picture here, where there's me in the middle, that little red blob thing. This yellow line here is the direction of the sunrise. So the sun obviously sets in the east. Uh, sorry, rising these sets in the west. We've got that wrong. The sun is going to rise with me looking in that direction, and then it's going to set in that direction. Obviously, it's going to rise at six min uh, nine minutes past six, and it's going to set at quarter past six, sort of um, sort of twelve hours later. Um, so straight away, we can we can tell that this will tell us that if I want to take a nice sunrise shot over the Portsmouth Harbour from where I am um, I've got to get down to the harbour at you know probably you know six o'clock set up on my gear and at approximately nine minutes past six the sun is going to rise obviously it all depends on what buildings and if there are any hills in the way it will probably come afterwards but that will then you know I've got the Spinnaker Tower there so I could get a nice shot with the sun coming up and I could do that in fact what I could also do is if I actually wanted the sun to be right behind the Spinnaker Tower I could just move myself and say, well, actually, I need to be a little bit further up the... If I go all the way up the Esplanade, almost to the beginning of the marina, I could get a shot with the sun probably directly behind the Spinnaker Tower, silhouetting the Spinnaker Tower. How cool is that? Um, 
and similarly then if you look behind me if, if I were to come back 12 hours later the sunset would be going that way now that's that, that's cool of itself isn't it that's worth downloading the software for free and having it on your Windows desktop I think there's a version for Mac as well and um, free now you may well be saying well okay Rob that's all very well and good but you know that's fairly simple and to be honest I could just check my um, my uh, free app that tells me when the sun rises and stuff and that's true but obviously this is showing you so more because it's showing you where things are going to but let's start looking at it in a little bit more detail as well the other thing that it can show us as well is from our viewpoint here obviously we can see the sun's going to set over to the right rise over to the right set over to the left if we press the shift button it extends um, the stuff in the other way in fact what I'll do is if I change the date because it's a bit of an odd one this moment because uh, the sun is set, is rising and setting in the same plane so if we let's change the date here um, as you can see as I'm going forward the angle of the Sun where it rises and sets is changing the lighter blue sorry line and the darker blue one is the rising and setting of the moon so let's do something like this so what we can see now is that the angle has changed so if I wanted to take a picture on the 6th of April of the Sun rising uh, in front of a Spinnaker Tower I'd have to get there at, you know just before 629 and I would have to stand if I stood about there, then I could silhouette the um, the uh, the Spinnaker Tower with the sun. However, it, we, we all know that one of the one of the most common pictures you often see are sunrises and sunsets with the camera looking into the sun. But sometimes the more interesting photos are where you're actually looking at the sun as it's setting or it's rising and it's shining on something. So let's say I decided I wanted to get a picture of the sun setting and the, the, the setting sun shining on the Spinnaker Tower. Well, if I press the shift button, whoop, you see these lines extending. So now what I can do is if I move my blob here, I can see, well, actually, you know, I'm not going to get the uh, the sun setting uh, against the Spinnaker Tower um, completely because it's going to miss it but I know that it's it's aiming in roughly the right direction so that before sunset there's going to be plenty of light that's, that's coming in the right direction to illuminate the Spinnaker Tower so how cool is that and so we could move that around so uh, another example would be um, so let's go back to today and if you want to go back to today's date we click on this little arrow down here and then what you can also do is you can um, down in the bottom you can search for locations so I could say actually I fancy going to I don't know Brighton Beach let's just put Brighton Beach in Bunk. so we've gone to Brighton let's zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing and then there's the pier there isn't it so let's move across or one of the piers let's zoom in a little bit I think that's the pier anyway I'm not, I'm not an expert on Brighton it's got to be there isn't it yeah that must be the that's the pier there so let's drop my marker and move him onto there so let's say I want a nice picture of the sun rising through Brighton Pier I can move this around probably over here you know and so if I if I stand there then we're gonna have the sunrise coming up through Brighton Pier and what I could then do is if I over on the right hand side here and I would have to be there at, um, you know just before 7 to set up my gear to catch the sun rising and if we zoomed out a little bit actually we could see is there anything going to be in the way well probably not nothing for quite a while you know this is, is quite a long way ahead so let's um, obviously this is um, this is Brighton in America not Brighton in the UK so I'm actually in the wrong country <laughs> this is Brighton UK that's better <laughs> here we go so let's try that again there's that's better there's Brighton Pier so let's put my mark so I want to get now what we can see straight away here the chances of me getting a sunrise shot through Brighton Pier probably aren't very good because there's the pier 
and the sun's going this way so if we let's move as we move sort of later on in the year through March everything's going in the wrong direction isn't it because I, in order to be able to get a shot I'd have to be out here on a boat no that's not going to happen however what I could do is if I stood over here I could get a picture of a sunset through the pier so if we go back to today's date ah there we go straight away so if I move down here the sunset would be over here and I could then shoot straight into the sunset or if I still stayed here but came at sunrise if we press the shift button you can't really see it but I would have the sun the, the, the rising sun shining onto the pier and all this water how cool would that be now let's say I really like that if we go over to the right hand side up to the top we've got the locations tab so what we can do here is we can um, add using this little pl plus button our current location so let's let's add that on and let's call it um, view towards Brighton Pier okay and we're just going to save that there so it's now a common thing so you might already see here I've got home so if I click on home and go go that takes us takes me to my house so there we go and the reason why I've got that in there is that sometimes I'll want to try and do uh, night photography so I might want to look at the, the the moon in particular and so I know if I go back to the ephemeris go back to today's date I know that if I wanted to take a picture of the moon <laughs> the moon is rising at, at 10 per, uh, 20 to 10 so I'd have to go into the garden then and then I could pro might be able to see it actually through the gap in these houses um, but again the problem with this house is here so it depended where the moon was as it goes up but I will show you that uh, in just a minute how you can do that so on a basic level you can see that the photographer's ephemeris uh, desktop version is incredibly powerful because I could say actually um, yeah I haven't done a sunset shot down at Leon Solent for recently so let's wander around here and let's I don't know let's go down here on the beach and um, yeah I really like that place there and um, I could say right I'm, I'm gonna do a sunset shot um, how about I know I'm free tomorrow I'm, I'm free on Friday night um, let's look at the time so that the Sun is going to be setting about 19 minutes past 6 in the evening so I better get down there for I don't know 6 o'clock and set up my gear so now you're saying well wait a minute Rob it's all well very well and good but you know you're not going to take your laptop with you are you how are you going to transfer this data onto your phone now there is a paid iOS and Android version where you could put all this stuff in your phone but you don't need to um, you can just share this details with your phone straight away and the reason we, we can do that is because we have the date we have the time and up here we have the location in uh, latitude and longitude so all we've got to do is if we are a user of Google Calendar and if you're not you know why not um, just start open up a Google account and use the Google Calendar um, and then make sure on your Android phone and this probably works for iOS as well make sure you download the um, Google version of the calendar app for example on my HTC one max it doesn't it, the standard HTC sense um, calendar doesn't handle this particularly well it gets the location sometimes wrong and makes it tricky however the Google calendar app uh, does it very very well indeed so download it and install that and use that instead and then all we've got to do is we've got to say let's go back to the photographer's ephemeris well okay so it's going to be on Friday the 21st of March at uh, I don't know say um, six o'clock so let's go back to here so when did we say the 21st of March so it's going to be here let's create event so let's put um, sunset shoot laws okay let's edit the event and we said it was going to be it's not an all day event it's going to be at eight, uh, six o'clock isn't it so 1800 hours to I don't know I'm probably going to be there to 1845 to get plenty of the afterglow we could put a description down here I don't know um, sunset shot at Los Beach um, there we go towards Isle of Wight now and then in the location 
if we go back to the photographer's ephemeris if we copy this here copy the latitude and longitude and then go back to calendar paste it in and then just save it okay now if we go go back into it it will probably be blank yeah. oh no it's still there oh good so let's save that so now you can probably see let's go to the uh, day view let's click on that one Oop. go to the day view go to the effect weeks probably better let's go to the 28th find out when it is I've got a bit lost sorry when was it it was on the tw 21st wasn't it sorry week there we are so there it is sunset shoot at Leon Solent so if we go into this now and you see where it says where there's map now when you look on your uh, calendar app on your Android device it will say where it is as well and when you click on that it'll open up Google Maps but da ding <laughs> look tells us exactly where we are um, and then we could ask for directions car directions to get us there and uh, isn't that fabulous so you know we've used the photographer's ephemeris to plan a shoot and then copy those details from the ephemeris into our Google Calendar including the latitude and longitude and the time and the date the calendar can remind us can't it, it gives an alarm the day before and half an hour before going oh remember you've got this photo shoot and you can click on where and you can jump in the car and it will take you there and tell you how to get there how cool is that so we've, we've joined almost those two programs uh, for free in a very effective way so uh, that I find that really really exciting now um, that's really just scratching the surface of the photographer's ephemeris but there's quite a lot there um, and uh, you could just stop there and be be more than happy with this with this free tool but let's let's dig a little deeper um, as you're moving your mouse around on the screen you'll probably see little tool tips come up as well um, and if you um, get, uh, click on them you can get all sorts of um, information up on uh, on different things um, and basically it will kick you into the glossary and then you can read all about uh, the particular uh, things we're talking about I'm, be, I'm not being very clear am I let, let, let's let's talk about that again so let's go into let's find something that it right sells you about so there we go so if we look on you uh, here it tells you all about uh, time zones and then if we click on that it opens up the glossary with the time zone and we can read all about it let's go back to the ephemeris so uh, for example over here if we put our tool over I don't know, let's find something else Tw uh, twilight <laughs> anyway let me uh, <laughs> that was a bit rubbish that wasn't forget the glossary basically you when you click on something and you're not sure what it is it will then kick you into the glossary and you can read more about it um, however <laughs> ignore that one let's let's dig a little deeper and see what else we can do for the, using the photographer's ephemeris now let's go back over here to Gosport and let's plunk my marker down um, for my favourite shoot towards the uh, Spinnaker Tower and let's say let's change the date till tomorrow by clicking on this now as we, we know we can see the direction that, uh, that the sun's rising and it's setting we can press the shift key and that will tell us where the other bits are known we can look at the direction that the moon's rising and the direction that the moon's setting so we could go and do some night photography and uh, take some nice pictures like that but what about all the times in between like where is the sun going to be well if we click down here in details the mul this um, view pops up now at first you think whoa what's going on but don't worry obviously we've got the date up here on the, the top left on top right corner till it's Thursday 20th of March we've got the normal details here so we know that the sunrise is going to be at 7 minutes past 6 and it's going to set at 17 minutes past 6 and the moon etc 
and then we've got this rather strange sort of uh, sine wavy thing here so what you know what is that well I'll show you in a sec and then if we go to the screen as well this other thing has popped up here this other little marker now that's a geodetics marker ignore it for now you don't have to worry about it yet in fact you don't have to worry about it at all really what we're really interested in is this and it's also telling us here the time of day that the map is set up for which is 8.45 because you've probably seen these other lines appear and what we can do is if we grab this little slider and slide it around you see that yellow line moving that is the angle that the sun is at so let's move it to nine o'clock nine a.m. so that's telling us the sun which has risen over here has now passed around the sky and it's heading round this way like that and it also tell, tells us here the angle above the horizon that it's at so it, it's at 25 degrees above the uh, the horizon so you could you know roughly work out where that is so how cool is that so remember we, we were talking um, about taking uh, shots where maybe um, you didn't really want a sunrise shot you wanted a shot of something else so I wanted something to change the date again so let's say I wanted a shot didn't I whereby I had the um, uh, the, the, the sunset illuminating Spinnaker Tower and so what I would do is if I keep the shift key pressed we should be able to see the um, the sun uh, sunset here now so what we want to do is we just want to change our sign to the sunset now if you want to change your time to the sunset if you click on these little markers here it'll take you to the next event so we've got moon set so the sunset is there uh, and the sunset is at uh, half past seven and then if I press shift you see how the the line moves there so I know uh, on Sunday the 30th of March the sunset is going to be illuminating straight over there which is missing Spinnaker Tower so let's change the date Ooh. so here we go now we've changed the date now it's looked like it's going almost through, sun through Spinnaker Tower but is it the right time right the sunset is half past seven so no it's not so what we can see is I can't get in these particular days a time when the um, sunset is going to be shining straight onto Spinnaker Tower <coughs> but you see how powerful this is what we're able to do now is if again let, let me move that around so you can you see the orange line I'm, I'm moving backwards in time now on the 3rd of April and the direction that that orange line is from me is where the Sun will be as I move around and it does exactly the same for the moon you see the the gray one in the top right corner we've got moon rising and that's how it goes across the uh, sky now obviously this particular moonrise on the 3rd of April um, we're not going to be able to see it because it, well you might be able to see it because you can see the moon during the day sometimes can you but we're probably not going to be able to see it because it could because it's during the day so you know you've got to watch out for things like that but how powerful is that you know you could say well you know um, imagine you were in I don't know let's go to let's go to New York City so here we are we're, we're on New York City and we know um, I don't know I'm kind of a bit out of my depth in New York <laughs> never having been there but where have we got let's go to the uh, West Street what's the main street called through Canal Street Holland Tunnel Hudson Street I don't know let's imagine we were standing on Hudson Street so let's put my marker in there so I'm standing on the corner of Hudson Street and West Houston Street right there and it's going to be uh, say I'm going on holiday there on the let's put a date in I'm going to be there in June the 10th there we go um, <laughs> so we're going to be on holiday and I'm going to be in New York for I don't know, sometime on that day so let, let's put the, the marker in the middle so we know that on June the 10th 2014 in New York on the corner of West Houston Street and Houston, Houston, Hudson Street sorry right there we can see there's the sunrise there's the sunset 
but let's say I want to take a picture exactly as the Sun was passing sort of in line with Hudson Street if I turn my little thing here I know that if I turn up at the corner of West Houston Street and Hudson Street on Tuesday the 10th of June at seven minutes past one the Sun as long as there's no rain <laughs> and no clouds will be shining pretty much down Hudson Street down that long road there how cool is that that's how powerful this program was I mean presumably as well so let's, let's zoom out a bit and the Sun would be at where would it it would be at 72 degrees above the horizon so it's quite high so there's a chance I'll be able to see it and get it get it in the shot or you know more importantly if we press the shift button I know that it's going to be shining down Hudson Street that way so if I want to take the pictures imagine how powerful that is so you could you could know if they call this like a henge sometimes where you go to a particular place it could be a natural pl uh, place like Stonehenge and you can work out exactly when the Sun is going to be slight shining on or down particularly corridors whether that be corridors of rock or corridors of um, concrete and and glass like in a, in a big city because we could do this for the moonrise as well can we so let's click this through to the moonrise so the moon rises at 1747 we know the sunset doesn't, doesn't set till half past eight so let's slide this along and see what the moon does there's the moon so we're probably going to get it yeah so there we go so there's Hudson Street um, and the moon goes past it at, at half past eleven uh, the moon would be at 31 degrees above the horizon so let's have a little bit more fun then Let, let's have a look at let's find the Empire State Building in New York there it is okay let's zoom out a bit so we can kind of see what we're doing I'll we'll zoom in a bit so there's the Empire State Building um, let's say we wanted to take a photo of the Empire State Building with the moon directly behind it can you imagine how difficult that might be to work out you know, how, how could you possibly do that well we know that if we change the t if we go with this and go to moon set moon rise so the moon comes up at uh, 1747 and let's just play around with the slider so we can say if it raises there and then I don't know the sun sets up or so at approximately I don't know midnight the sun would be the the, the moon would be over here so it's not a particularly good example of that because I don't know where you could stand to see the to, to see the moon because obviously it's a lot of build, built up buildings isn't there in um, in uh, in New York but again if you were standing on the Empire State Building if you pointed your camera that way you would see the moon and it and it would be up be above it that way so there you go so you know how powerful is that that is amazing isn't it you know all these things you could plan in advance. Um, and then share this, you know, w with your uh, with your calendar, and your, your, to make sure when you go to a particular location, you could make sure that um, you're going to be there at the correct time to to get the correct light that you want, the correct sun, or you could even work out exactly the angle that the sun's going to be striking something at. Very very powerful indeed. Now, let's go back to Gosport. I'm going back to Gosport and then what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a quick look at the geo um, geodetics uh, uh, feature now you could again with what we've talked about you could just stop and be happy with that but the geodetics takes into account the fact that the earth isn't flat um, and obviously because the earth isn't flat and you've got hills and things in the way and canyons things like your um, sunrises and sunsets are pretty much that the estimates if the earth was a perfect sphere then all these sunrises and sunsets 
uh, details you see they would all be but they would all be perfect wouldn't they but they're not you know the earth is like bumpy and what this second marker enables you to do is see the difference in height if you like between different points so um, the problem with round gospel it's all pretty flat there aren't really that many lumps and bumps so we've got to kind of zoom out a little bit and go somewhere else so if we go north a little bit there's Ports Down Hill which is about the highest place around here um, and let's say we were over at Portchester Castle and this is this is just just an example really so Portchester Castle if we plonk myself right down there um, let's go to sunrise so there's sunrise so that's that's me there now um, ports down here if we go to terrain you might be able to see it better so this is ports downhill along here now we know that on, on through in this case on Tuesday the 10th of June the sunrise is going to be coming over the top of uh, a ports downhill so if I turned up at Portchester Castle hoping to catch the sunrise the hill's going to be in the way and I'm not going to see it am I um, or if I wanted to catch the sun hitting the castle by maybe taking a picture from over here um, and then if I press the shift button just to make sure it's going to shine through Portrait Castle which it does the hill's going to be in the way is it straight away so one of the things I could do is if I take my little GOD's geodetics marker and plonk, plonk him on top of Ports Downhill up here like that what this then tells me is the difference between the height of that and that. So the difference in height between where I am here and where uh, the top of Portsdown Hill is, is 79 metres. So it's 80 metres higher than I am. And it's an apparent, um, it's raising up uh, to 2.1 degrees. So in order for the sun to creep over the top of here, really it's going to be at least 2.1 degrees so one of the things I could do is if we go to sunrise whoops, like there the sun I'm going to be able to see the sun when it gets to over 2 degrees so let's say say it's something like that 2.5 degrees and if we press shift we know that well actually it's pretty much still shining through the middle of Porch of the Castle, so that's fine. Um, it's going to be a slightly different quality of light because it's going to be later on in the day, but um, I'm still going to be in roughly the right place to get it get it to go on it that way. So that that's all well and good, isn't it? Now, um, if you're taking photographs around the Rockies or any mountain sort of areas, this can be really important because the change in um, attitude change in altitude if you like from one point to the other could be really extreme it could be several thousand feet which really would change the point at which the sun starts to peep over the the peaks or more importantly if you were shining um you were waiting for the sun to hit a particular area and it was rising over the peak then that would be a different matter in, indeed so let's take it from the other way then let's say i was in portchester castle um and in fact I wanted to take a picture of Portchester Castle but I wanted the light to be coming again over the top of uh, Ports Down Hill. What I could do is if I switch positions like this so that's now me up here and that's um, where Portchester Castle is down here we can do something quite clever indeed. As we said the problem is that the earth isn't round is it? Um, and so wherever we are that's going to change things like the, 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 the sunrise and the sunset and what I can do is if I lock this position in now what it does is the program then assumes the fact that the height of the visible horizon is going to be at that height there for me so if I lock that in you'll see so we've locked that in and the um, sunrise in fact, I should have checked it before shouldn't I will have changed a little bit it's now 448 um, and if we zoom out what we can also see is an estimate of the visible horizon of what I should be able to see from where I am 
up on the top of Portsdown Hill. So that's quite cool, isn't it? Um, it means that on a clear day from the top of Portsdown Hill, I should be able to see, you know, um, well past uh, the Isle of Wight and over to Bognor Regis in the east and Lymington in the west. So that's really cool in, it, in and of itself. But again, if you can imagine, if you were working in the um, in the Rockies or the Pyrenees or somewhere like this, the fact that you can roughly work out the difference in uh, that that height makes to the time of sunset and sunrise could make a difference to to you actually getting here. Now again, here in the UK, because there's not that many huge mountains, especially where we live, the the, the changes are, are like in 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 matter of minutes or seconds, um, and so you'd always keep to the rule of thumb of you know you get the, get there half an hour early to set up, and you know you're going to be in the right sort of ballpark. Okay, so there we go. So if we go then back, let's go back to the single view to make everything um, kind of normal again. I hopefully what we've done today. I know it's probably dragged on a little bit this video, but I've encouraged you to have a look at something like the Photographer's Ephemeris. Download it because it's for free on uh, your Windows um, desktop. And you know, even if you just use the basic functionality that you can see here, where you just plonk a pin down where you want to take a photograph on a particular day, and it'll tell you, well, look, the sun's going to come up there, and it's going to set, you know, at that angle. There's the moon rising, and then you can always go into the details option, and then turn the slide around, and that's going to tell you, you know, which direction the sun is going to be at a particular point. Then you've got an immensely powerful tool to play around with, um, and. Um, you, you really um, uh, get, get. I think you get quite a lot, lot out of it because it makes you think about the direction of sun when you're going to uh, locations. Now, obviously, me and my cack-handed way of trying to describe the photographer's ephemeris might not isn't probably the best way. Um, uh, first off, you can get the photographer's ephemeris. Just uh, go to YouTube and type in photographers e p h e m r e r i s, and that'll take you to the right site. But on the site, there's some excellent tutorials as well, but they're quite hard to find if you don't want to watch the YouTube ones. And what you do is you go to the tutorials section, and then what you do is you scroll down. Here we go, where we are. Yeah, go to fo the, the photoephemeris.com forward slash tutorials and then scroll a long way down and there's a bit that says using TPE part 3. I don't know which one. And then in there you've got part 1 and part 2 and part 3 and there is part 4 I think. And these are really good walkthroughs that, that without having a video with them and they tell you, they, they've got little um, jobs you can do as well. So it says look, go to this place, do this and, and you'll see this happens and it will really help you understand how the ephemeris works and how you can get the most out of it. But again, what they're always saying is look, use it for what you want to do. You don't have to go into the really advanced settings um, um, but even if you just use the most basic settings, you'll get a lot out of it. So there we go. The Photographer's Ephemeris, a fantastic free tool uh, for your Windows desktop. It's not just for people who use the zone system, you know, your ordinary everyday photographer can get quite a lot out of it too. My name's Rob from RobNumphoto.com. Thanks for watching.